The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Ninth chapter, text number two, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 20th of April, 1976, in Melbourne, Australia. So, this knowledge, as we have begun yesterday, that Idamte, Idamtu te goya tamam parakshami asuyavi, jnanam vidyana saitam jajnatya moksha se Very important chapter. The most confidential knowledge, goya tamam, and it is spoken by Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God. Even those who are diverted from this material contamination, they are called mukta jiva, liberated soul. And there are nitya mukta, nitya mukta and nitya vadha. Nitya means eternity, and mukta means liberated. And again, nitya eternally. Bhagha, condition. So, just like there are many persons in this state who have never seen what is the prison life. And there are many persons in this state, the majority of one's life is passed in the prison. Similarly, there are true nature material nature and the spiritual nature. What we are seeing, this nature, this universe, within the material nature. Similarly, there is another spiritual nature that is stated in the Bhagavad-gītā. Parastasmātu bhāva anya bhaktya bhaktya samātana. There is another nature. You cannot deny it where God's kingdom, creation, how far it is, and how widespread it is, by your imagination you cannot determine the so-called advancement of scientific knowledge is useless in the estimation of the total creation. This creation Material creation is one-fourth exhibition of the total creation. And the three-fourth exhibition of the total creation is the spiritual world. So there are also, like here we have got so many planets, and each planet is full of living entities. As this planet is full of living entities, similarly in other planets, upper, middle, down, there are millions, millions of different types of living entities. It is a false statement that only on this planet there is living entities. In other planets there are no living entities. There is nonsense. There are living entities exactly like this. Maybe the climate, the situation little different, just like your climate, India climate, even on this planet there are different climatic situations, European, American, Australian, Asian. So that is God's varieties of creation. So we have to take knowledge from the perfect person. So what is the difference between this material world and the spiritual world? In the material world we are conditioned, and in spiritual world we are liberated. This is the difference. What is conditioned life? Conditioned life means subjected to the rules and regulations of the material nature. That is conditioned life. 
Just like we have got this body, this is also a condition of the material nature. We have got different types of bodies. Why? Because we are conditioned. According to our karma, we have got different types of bodies. Eight million four hundred thousand of bodies. So, liberated life means not to go under the condition of this material nature. That is liberated life. In the conditions life there are four defects out of many other conditions. So far our knowledge is concerned, that is defect. Why? Because we commit mistake. Every one of us we commit mistake. We are illusion. Our senses are imperfect. And we have a tendency to cheat. This is whole defects of conditioned life. But the liberated life, they have no such conditions. And another condition is we have to live under threefold miseries. That miserable conditions pertaining to the body and mind. Even if you are opulent externally, if you are sick, if your mind is not in proper condition, you suffer. That is called adhatmik. And there are other miseries offered by other living entities. Just like some friend all of a sudden becomes your enemy uh, and he tries to inflict some injuries upon you, you are full of anxieties. Uh, this is called adhim hopi. Even there is no enmity. There are so many living entities, just like birds, mosquitoes, and other animals. They are always prepared to give us trouble. This is called adhi bhauti, adhatmi, adhi bhauti, and adhi doivi. Every miserable condition is beyond your control. But especially adhi doivi, having pestilence, overflow, no rain. Scarcity, this is called Abhidvaiti. So this is called conditioned life. So if you have got perfect knowledge that is described here, that jnana vigyana saitam, if you have got perfect knowledge, then the result will be yajyatta. If you possess that perfect knowledge, then moksha se asubha. These conditions we don't want. That is the real fact. We don't want any miserable condition due to my mind, due to my body, or due to other living entities, or natural disturbances, birth, death, old age, disease. We don't want. These are inauspicities of life. But if you have got perfect knowledge, then Krishna says that you become liberated from all these inauspicities. That is the subject matter of this chapter. Therefore, Krishna says that this knowledge is Rajavidya. We have got different departments of knowledge, university and institutes, but nowhere this subject matter is discussed or there is any department. Uh, suppose medical department. What is the medical department? To give us relief from disease condition. But there is no department which discusses how to become free from all diseases. There is no department. There is no such department. There is department how to give you relief from disease. There is department how to manufacture very effective medicines. But there is no department where knowledge is given the no more disease. Is there any department? Uh, therefore, this knowledge which is given by Krishna, it is called Rajavidya. Rajavidya means the king of knowledge. If you learn this knowledge, then you become completely free from the conditioned stage of this material world. 
That's what is called Raja. Raja means king. And Vidya means knowledge. Raja Vidya, Raja Bhuyam. And at the same time, it is the most confidential knowledge. Bhuyam, Bhuyatamam, very confidential. It is not disclosed to ordinary man. This knowledge is not meant for. Suppose we are discussing this knowledge and when we say, by understanding this knowledge, there is no more birth, death, old age, and disease. Ordinary person with less brain substance, they will laugh. They will say, hey, how is this possible? Therefore, it is very confidential. It is not open to everyone. It is meant for selected person. If I say that I shall give you relief from birth, death, old age, and disease, you will not believe it. Therefore, it is Raya Guyam. Guyam is very, very confidential. Raja Vidya, Raja Guyam, Pavitram. Pavitram means very pure because unless we are purified, we cannot be free from these four miserable conditions, especially, namely birth, death, old age, and disease. Birth, death, old age is meant for this body. And the body is obtained by the spirit soul. The spirit soul is pure. There is no doubt about it, because it is part and parcel of Krishna or God. The so God is pure. Just like gold is gold, and the fragments of gold is also gold. The same quality, but the fragments of gold sometimes becomes mixed up with dirty things. So we are in the same condition, in the becoming fragments of God. We are sometimes put into this material world and we are materially contaminated. So this knowledge, Rāja-vidyā, most confidential, if we can learn it, then we become pure, completely pure. Pavitram is of uttamam. Uttamam. Ut means uddhvapa, transcendental. And tamā means this material world. That in the material world, the nature is dark, and just like at night, it is darkness. This is the nature of this material world. But it is, there is illumination on account of the sun. The God has created the sun to give us light. Sometimes we have heard that on account of absence of the sun sign, they commit suicide in Scandinavia, they say. So the darkness is very, very disgusting. And, but this material world is dark. To give us little relief, Krishna, God has given us this sun. The day before, yesterday, I think, uh, yesterday, uh, in the morning, we saw while coming on the track how the sun was coming through the sea nicely. Within a second, the whole life came. So this is God's arrangement. Don't think that this arrangement, exactly in the time, six o'clock in the morning, immediately the sun comes out of the sea and gives you light. Because this material world is dark. Uh, in order to give you relief, otherwise you will commit suicide. God is so kind. He is giving you light. So Uttama, so, if we can go back to home, back to Godhead, there is no darkness. It is all illuminated. It is stated in the Shastra that there is no need of sun. There is no need of moon. There is no najatra bhāsati sūrja na sasāṅta na pāvaka. In the spiritual world, there is no need of sun. There is no need of moon. There is no need of electricity or power. That is this description here in the Bhagavad-gītā is fine. 
न जत्रा भाषते सूर्य न शशांक न पावक वी कैन नॉट इमेजिन हाउ विदाउट सन विदाउट मोन विदाउट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी विदाउट फायर वन कैन लीव यस बट देर इज अ वर्ड लाइक दैट do not require sun sign you do not require there all few many so that is uttama udgata tama jasma the sanskrit word from which the darkness is completely eradicated the janada bengali thoughts krishna shudra sama maya andhaka jaha krishna taha nahi maya odhika the mirror krishna is just like sun and maya illusion is just like darkness so as the sun being present there is no access of darkness similarly if you keep krishna always within your heart there is no more darkness of this material world krishna shuddha sama maya andhakar jaha krishna taha the example is given If you keep yourself always, Krishna is in your heart. Krishna is within your heart. It is not that you have to create a Krishna or God, or you have to call. He is there, but due to darkness we cannot see him. But by chanting this Hare Krishna mantra, Jeeta Dhatmana Madhyam, by cleaning the core of our heart, you will be able to see Krishna within yourself. Dinavam upyantite. The instruction is how he can come back, go back to home, back to Godhead. Moksha si or subha, being free from all inauspicity. That stage can be attained. How these are satadvijuktaran bhagatan prithi purva. If you engage yourself always in his service, satadvijuktaran, satadvijuktaran means always. All is engaged in his service, uh, bhajatan priti purva, and worshiping the Lord with priti love, priti bhajatan priti purva. So this is being instructed to the students who have entered this institute how to worship the deity. The deity worship is there just to give chance to the devotee. Satata, satata juttana, all is engaged in Krishna service. From early morning, up to three, four, up to night, ten, they are engaged. That is called satata juttana. Only a few hours given to them for taking rest, because after all, we have got this material body. He requires little rest. Otherwise, there is no question of resting. Twenty-four hours engaged in the service of Krishna, so that is possible as you become advanced. Just like the six Goswamis, they attain that stage. They are not sleeping at night, giving service. It is said, "Nana sahasya vichar nahi kuni kuno sad dharma sangsthapa ko loka naam hito kari nam nidya har vidita." This is spiritual life. The more you conquer over the necessities of this body, the our necessities, the created necessities, they are necessities of the body. The body requires to eat. The body requires rest. The body requires sex. The body requires defense. But the soul does not require. So more you become advanced in spiritual consciousness. The material necessities become minimum. Nidya har bihar kadi bhi to. That is possible. That is not story. There are many instances, and the more you become advanced in Krishna consciousness, spiritual life, these necessities of life, this is a body, because body is dependent from the spirit soul. The necessities of the body. Is material, and the necessities of the soul is spiritual. But unfortunately, although the spirit is there, we are so much 
absorbed in material consciousness, we do not understand what is spirit soul. We are simply busy in taking care of the body. So this is not very good condition. This is material condition, and it is very risky. It is simply to take care of the body means creating different desires. I shall be happy in this way. I shall be happy in this way. So our nature's mercy is that as soon as you think that you will enjoy life like this, she will give you good opportunity. That means changing a body wherein you can enjoy the material facilities very easily. I have several times given an example. There are different types of bodies. Animals, birds, bees, demigods, human beings, many varieties of life. Eight million four hundred thousand. Higher life, lower life. So those who are associating with the base qualities of material nature, they get lower life. That is natural. Just like you contaminate a kind of disease, it will become manifest in due course of time. But this is going on. But if we understand this knowledge, as Krishna is speaking, Raja Vidya Raja Vidyam, Pavitram Idam Uttama, then Pratyaksham Avagavam Dharma. Dharma, one meaning of Dharma is the basic principle of our life or the occupational duty of our life. Dharma. Occupational duty of our life, that is called dharma. Generally in English, dharma is translated by the word religion, a kind of faith. But actually, dharma means the characteristic, that is real meaning of dharma. Characteristic. Let's say you can understand by the characteristic in the chemical laboratory, they test different chemicals. So the heading is characteristic. This chemical looking such and such color, the granules are like this, the taste is like this, the reaction is like this. If you put with this, it will react like this. So many if certain chemicals comply with all the characteristics, then it is declared pure. So suppose what is the characteristic of sugar? Everyone knows it must be sweet. Sugar and salt, both of them externally seem the same, white. But you have to understand which is sugar and which is salt by tasting. There are different tastes of characteristics. If sugar becomes salty, immediately, oh, it is not sugar. And if salt becomes sweet, you will Similarly, dharma means everything has got a special character. That is called dharma. So what is our dharma? Living entities. We are living entities. We may be in different forms. It doesn't matter. Eight million, four hundred thousands of forms. But what is the actual business? The actual business is that every one of us giving service to other. This is all. That is enunciated by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Jivera Sarupa Nitya Krishna Das. This is the characteristic of living entity. Living entity is meant for giving service to Krishna. This is the characteristic. When this characteristic is not found, or lack it, that means it is disease condition, or that is material condition. Just like this finger. What is the characteristic of finger? The finger characteristic, it is a part and parcel of my body. As soon as I say, my dear servant's finger, please capture this immediately. My dear servant's finger, come on the head and give me some itching. Yes. This is characteristic. If the finger, I order, please pick up this rasgulla. Yes. It is here. Yes. The finger cannot eat. 
Just try to understand. The finger, if he gets some rasgulla, nice, tasteful, sweet meat, the finger will never try to smash it and spoil it. <laughs> The fingers immediately will taste, you find psychology, even from a child. The child captures with the finger some nice sweetness and immediately puts it. Why? Uh, the child could smash it and taste this as well. That is not possible. Study nature. You take the very nice sweet. The fingers cannot spoil it. The process is that by nature, the child knows that if I put into the mouth, it goes to the stomach, and if it is digested, these fingers will be healthy, the eyes will be healthy, the leg will be healthy, hands will be healthy, every, all parts of the body will be This is natural. The child, another example is given. Jathakarur mula visita nema. Tippanti tasupandu bhujopa sāpha. Just like tree, if you tree plant anything, you pour water in the root, it goes, transfer to the branches, to the trees, to the leaves, to the flower. Everyone, if you put water. Dathākarun mūla nisītane nā tippanti tasupandu bhujopa sāpha. Prāno-pahārātsa jathendriyāna, and by giving food to the stomach, that all the different parts of the body, limbs and senses, they become healthy. Similarly, sadhāhanam acyutejjā, if you worship Krishna acyutā, then the whole world will be satisfied, because He is the root. It is said in the Bhagavad-gītā, Aham sarva saprabhava matta sarvam pravartate iti matya bhajante maan buddha bhava samarnika. One who understands, this is Rajivita. He must know how to work. We are manufacturing so many ways of happy life. This isn't, that isn't, that plan, that plan. So many plans. We are seeing suggestions, so many suggestions in the television. Uh, this is the problem, this is the suggestion, this is the problem. Full of new, new problem, new, new suggestion. But because we are lacking this Rāgavidya, the king of knowledge, we are perplexed. But if you know that Krishna is the root cause of everything, and if we serve Krishna, then every problem will be solved. Hey, this is called Rāgavidya. Rāgavidya, eh? Rāgavidya, and pratakhāvagabham dhamma. Just like I have given the example that the different parts of the body, they are suffering from different diseases. But if you make good treatment, if you take the proper medicine and put it in the stomach, then immediately you will understand, yes, I am getting relief. Or suppose you are hungry, you are on account of your hunger, you are feeling headache, you cannot see through your eyes properly, you cannot hear, you cannot walk, so many things, problems will arise. But as soon as you put some food stuff, nourishing food stuff, he immediately you feel strength and you happy, happy. This is called pratyaksha. Pratyaksha means direct. Abhagavam, dharmam. If you are hungry and if you are giving very nice, nutritious, palatable food, you haven't got to take any certificate from others. You understand yourself. Yes, I am now feeling strength. I am now feeling energy. This is called pratyakham avagavam dharma. Similarly, if you take to Krishna consciousness, that is the process, then you will feel automatically how you are satisfied. These boys, these American, European, they are all Western country, belong to Western country. Why they are sticking to this Krishna consciousness? Because they are feeling directly happiness. There is no doubt about it. Ask anyone. 
This is pratakam avagavam dharma. And susukam, to execute this dharma, this transaction, it is very, very happy. Don't you see? What is their business? They are not going to the factories to work twelve hours. They are simply chanting and dance. This is their business. And when they are hungry, they are taking very nutritious prasad. This is called susukham. Very happy. They haven't got to work in the factory, in the mine, in the sea for extracting oil or coal. They haven't got. We have no such business. We are simply engaged in chanting, dancing, and eating Krishna prasad. Susukham. Pratakham avagava. Practically, you can perceive. And how happy it is, you can perceive. Uttum abhayam. To execute this business of Krishna consciousness is so easy and happy. And whatever you do, a little, it is a permanent asset. It will never be spoiled. You find in the Bhagavad Gita that Sutinam Simatangehe Yoga Bhrasta Sandhyaya. This is called Bhakti Yoga. Suppose somebody is enjoying, but Maya is very strong. If he falls down, he could not execute the Krishna consciousness program completely in this life. Mostly, if we simply stick, there is no difficulty. But if voluntarily we give up, there is another thing. Uh, what is wrong there? Chant, dance, and take prasad. You haven't got to work. You haven't got to go to the field work or to the factory. Still, if you don't accept it, you fall down. So that is your choice. But even if you fall down, because for a few days you join Krishna consciousness movement, your result and actions for so much time is permanent asset. Permanent asset. What is that permanent asset? That is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. That Suchidana Simatam Dehe Yoga Bhrasta Sanyat. Those who are fallen from this Krishna consciousness, their next life is guaranteed a human life. Because otherwise there is no guarantee. Tathade Hantra Prati according to one's karma. He can get the body of a dog, cat, hog, or demigod. There is no guarantee that Krishna says, Tatha Dehantara Prati. Antara means anala. He does not say that this body he will get. But if one is Krishna's devotee, then there is guarantee. What is that guarantee? Suchinam Simatangi. He will take birth in a very rich family. Or in a very nice Brahman and Vaishnava's family. If he gets a Vaishnava's birth in a Vaishnava's family, just like uh, we have got so many children among our Grihastha devotees, uh, how fine they are. They are getting Krishna consciousness from the beginning of their life. That means in the past they advanced in Krishna consciousness. Somehow or other they fail to complete, now they are birth, again chant. Again in the temple, dancing and chanting from the very beginning of life. So this is the opportunity. Huh? So this knowledge, Raja Vidya Raja Vyam, Pratakham Avagam Susukham Kottam Abhayam. Abhayam means in ordinary creative activities, whatever you do, suppose by karma, by material activities, sweet activities, become very rich man, or very learned man, very good office. But everything will be finished with your death. As soon as the body is finished, all your assets finished. But if you become a devotee, your body may be finished, but the soul is eternal. The soul will carry your assets of Krishna consciousness and nature will give you another chance of taking birth in a very rich family or in a Vaishnava family. To get birth in a Vaishnava family is greater asset 
than to take part in this family. This family means there is no economic problem. But on account of richness one may fall down. But if one takes birth in a Vaishnav family, there is no more fall down. He makes progress farther and farther. In this way he is allowed again go back to home, back to God. Thank you.